Hi, I'm Brad Siegel. Welcome to Northern Brewery University's course on step mashing. In this course, we're gonna take an introductory deep dive on what this mashing technique is, why you might use it, and how to do it. In this course, we're gonna look at the advanced all grain technique of step mashing. By going through the steps involved in detail, we hope to introduce you to this new world of mashing. These include temperatures and enzymes involved, rest times, how to decide which step mash schedule is appropriate for your recipe. We'll demo this mash technique in two ways. One using a cooler system with water additions to raise the temperature. The other utilizing a more complex system that includes a kettle with a false bottom on a propane burner. So who's this class for? Well, it's for all grain brewers looking to have yet more control over the aspect of mashing. It's for brewers who might concentrate on brewing specifically to certain classic styles. And it's also for brewers working with undermodified or unique malts that benefit from the step mashing process. This is not an introduction to all grain course. If you're taking this course, we assume you've taken our other course, Home Brewing 301, Home Brewing the All Grain Way, or have a working knowledge of all grain brewing, including mashing, watering, and sparging. Step mashing can be considered the first method to learn beyond basic single infusion all grain brewing. Before we go through the two demonstrations of how we accomplish this, we want to take a minute and go over what step mashing is and why it might benefit your beer. Here, we'll be taking a very simple approach to the technique. Our goal is to provide you with the basic knowledge and tools to perform step mashes for beer styles that might call for it. Step mashing is exactly what it sounds like. Mashing your grist in two or more steps, or stages, with each step increasing the mash temperature to a higher temp. It is a bit more involved and complex than the more typical single infusion mashing where you would mash and rest your grist at one single temperature for the entirety of the mash. So why do you do step mash? When's it most useful? In step mashing, by adding small amounts of near boiling water, the temperature of your mash increases in increments. When left to rest at these different temperatures, we access different enzymes in the grist. This is most useful in recipes that include undermodified malts such as continental pilsner malt, or grains high in gums like proteins and beta-glucans. These gummy grains include rye, oats, and wheat. A great upside to step mashing is that you'll have all the control over the enzymes in the mash so you can tailor your mash profile to your exact grist bill. More on the why and the when in the next chapter. But as for the how, there's a few ways you can accomplish a step mash. And we're gonna show you what you need to know for your first attempt at this technique. First, we'll show you how to step mash using a two cooler system with additions of hot water. We'll also show you how to step mash using direct heat under a kettle with a false bottom. Now that we've introduced the concept of step mashing, it's time to get a little nerdy, and then we'll roll up our sleeves and get brewing. Join us for our Northern Brewer University online course, Home Brewing 302 Step Mashing.